Sequoia Tompkins, and today we're talking about some recent legislative success this past session, specifically House Bill 1268, which adds stocking to domestic violence protection orders. We're going to touch base with three individuals specifically who helped make this bill become a law. So, Zach, I think I want to start off by a representative, Ista, I guess I should say, in this oh, Zach forum. Oh, just fine. <laughs> I think I should first off say thank you um, just for everything you did for not only CVIC, but the whole state. You were felt like you were in lockstep with us. I know there was like 900 bills that hit the floor throughout the session, but you were able to help us with actually two very important ones. The first one being um, House Bill 1268, which adds stocking to domestic violence protection orders. And maybe you can just um, start off by explaining explaining um, what changes were proposed and why this is important because a lot of people don't even know that that wasn't in a domestic violence protection order previously. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it really was my pleasure and, and honor to partner with CVIC and so many important issues this session. Uh, 1268 was, was a really important one. As you mentioned, the primary goal of that bill was to add stalking as a basis under which somebody could seek that protection of a domestic violence uh, protection order. So what we propose to do in that regard is just simply change the definition of domestic violence in the statute to include that word stalking. We already defined it in our state criminal code, so we were able to just borrow that definition. And now going forward, those who are experiencing stalking can seek that protection uh, of a DVPO. That's important because under current law, the only recourse would be a disorderly conduct restraining order. Now that would stop the inappropriate behavior, stop the contact, but with the domestic violence protection order, there's additional protections like child custody issues, personal property, residential property, even firearms can be removed from the alleged uh, offender's home if necessary. We also took a look at a second uh, issue involving notice and service of notice of these proceedings. There's an opportunity in this domestic violence protection order realm for the proceedings to kind of drag on just because you can't get notice served on the, uh, the accused. Mm -hmm. So what we propose to do is to allow notice by publication in a newspaper on a website. And in the legislature, we sort of sought to balance the rights of those seeking the order to make sure their case moves forward with the rights of the accused to make sure they have proper notice and an opportunity to, uh, to be heard. We had a lot of questions from a few representatives just about that because there was a balance between both both rights, right? The rights of the accused and the rights of the, the victim. So I just appreciate all the extra effort you put into that, which is actually a good segue to Laura Nash Frisch is our vice president of victim witness and visitation. And you actually helped Representative Ista um, with some of the language that went into the bill. Can you share what led up to recognizing the need for this? Yeah, so some of what led up to um, the need for this is that um, domestic violence advocates in our state are authorized to help with domestic violence protection orders. And they are not allowed to assist with disorderly conduct restraining orders, which focus a little bit more on harassing behaviors and disorderly conduct. So one of the issues we were seeing is that a victim might be um, dealing with violence in the relationship. And then when they attempt to leave, maybe there has not been a, um, a physical incident or a threat of a, a physical incident after that but they're being stalked and monitored by their partner. And so our um, advocates alone could not proceed with assisting them with that disorderly conduct restraining order, even though they were escaping an, an abusive relationship. So this will open up the door to um, allow us to assist more survivors with that safety need and really move them to that next level of recovery and healing from um, abuse. Can you explain for those who may not be as close to the domestic violence work, what stalking is and why it should be considered as part of a domestic violence protection order. Yeah. Stalking is legally defined as an intentional course of conduct directed at a specific person that serves no legitimate purpose and is not a constitutionally protected activity. The course of conduct is um, really two or more incidents that are kind of um, they have the same intent. It could be two or more incidences of someone followed me and they told me, you're gonna pay for what you've done um, to, the, to our family. Those things are something that the um, legally are considered nonviolent. And so if stalking ranges from um, behaviors like that to um, monitoring online accounts, tracking them through GPS, things like um, giving them unwanted gifts, it, Things that might seem to the outsider to be 
really um, benign and non-threatening, but to somebody who has a history with that person or who has had um, just a repeated onslaught of texts and calls and and we know it's such a part of domestic violence, both in the relationship and outside the relationship. What can seem like small things can really turn into very tragic and awful things. So this is another tool for advocates and our agencies across the state to be able to assist them with safety. Yeah, it can get, be very scary when a victim is trying to leave and sometimes they just sort of give up and then we don't move forward to get a solution to their issues. So. Exactly. Yeah. And Andrea, um, Representative Ista kind of talked a little bit about the publication part of the bill. Can you speak to the importance of this change for our clients and survivors? There are big differences between disorderly conduct restraining orders and domestic violence protection orders. One of the main ones being custody. Mm -hmm. So if someone is experiencing stalking and has a, they have a child in common with that person, under the current law, you would only be able to seek a disorderly conduct restraining order, which isn't able to address any temporary custody or parenting time um, issues. And so really, you can get that restraining order put in place, but you're still dealt with the issue of how do we parent together? How do, yep, exactly. And trying to, to work with someone you just got a restraining order against in parenting time is extremely difficult, if not impossible, um, especially without paying a, quite a bit of money for attorneys to be involved with all of those exchanges. So I think it will be very impactful and important uh, to give more options to survivors. Other courses of conduct that might not be your kind of uh, textbook stalking cases of following someone, constant threats to harm or intimidate, um, I'm hoping will also be able to come under this definition. And we've actually seen a pretty dramatic increase of cases like that where our hands are pretty tied along with the clerk's office and the uh, judges and everyone kind of involved in the system because there's case law that says unless that threat of violence is very imminent that it doesn't qualify for a domestic violence protection order. So I'm really hopeful that adding stalking's definition to domestic violence protection order will allow us to get protection in some of those kind of non-traditional mm -hmm. stalking cases as well. Well, I thank you all for given as part of your morning today and um, we'll just keep we'll probably have you back in a couple of years to see how it's all playing out so thank you